We bow our heads and we say a prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So point your eyes back to that Deuteronomy lesson this morning for our consideration. Have you ever been really good at doing something, but then you get put in front of a crowd or in front of a group of people, and then all of a sudden that, that thing that you thought you were pretty good at has become a lot more challenging? And maybe almost to the point that, that you've forgotten the very basics of what you're doing? Abby and I were recently put into a situation like this because uh, we just joined a curling league. <laughs> and we, we went to a couple practices with a few people that were helping us learn how to curl. And we, we thought we were getting pretty good at, at curling. And then, uh, you know, we had gotten all right at coming out of the hack. We had gotten all right with our balance. We thought we could sweep pretty well. And we got to our first match. And you should have seen the first rocks that we threw. Uh, Abby curled it the wrong way. And I looked like I was about to plop over on my side as I went sliding out. Uh, because we got down to it, we got put in front of this crowd. And all of a sudden, it was a lot more challenging than we thought. When it comes to our lives uh, of faith, we often need to be reminded of the basics. We forgot the very basics of getting out of the hack, of just letting the, the, the stone loose. When it comes to our lives of faith, when the challenges come in life, when the hardships hit us, we often need to be brought back to those very basics. We need to hear the law and the gospel. Because sometimes those basics can be the hardest things for you and for me to remember when it comes down to it. And Moses, in our, our lesson for today in the book of De Deuteronomy, he's giving his, it's part of his farewell speech to the Israelites. Uh, Moses is no longer going to be their earthly leader. Uh, instead, he's going to be passing on the reins, and this is his speech to the Israelite people. And as he, he's giving this speech, he's seemingly bringing Israel back to those basics. And he does so by starting out uh, using words that could remind us of that very first commandment that God gave to his people. Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord in a loving, in a respecting kind of way. Walk in obedience to him. Love and serve him and observe the Lord's commands that he has given to you. Moses, in his final address to the Israelite people, seems to be bringing them back to focus on the Lord, the gracious, the compassionate God, this Lord, the, the one that chose you to be his people. Listen to what he says and walk in obedience to what he says. But the history of Israel shows us that they often need to be brought back to these basics. They often need this refocusing that, that Moses is giving them today. Uh, because all too often, we see the Israelites disobey the Lord and wander away and openly disobey what, what God has said. As we read the Old Testament, much of it with the Old Testament people and our God is seemingly a cycle. You have the people of Israel delivered uh, from, from some uh, challenge that they're going through. And you have God in his grace. He allows them to walk out of it, uh, to be delivered, to be set free. Yet then the Israelites turn back and they're stiff-necked against the Lord and they don't want to obey his commands. And Moses in his address just before our lesson for today, brought one of those unpleasant stories back up with the Israelites. He reminded them in chapter 9 of, of that, uh, the golden calf incident, where you have the Israelites who not only disobeyed what God said, but they set up a, a golden calf, a statue, and said, this is the God who brought us out of Egypt. 
And so Moses, he, he, he gives them this, this reminder of how they have abandoned God, and God had every right at that moment to do exactly that to them. He could have left them. God had every right to leave Israel there and say, you abandoned me? Good luck. And this happened time and time again in Israel's history where they disobeyed God. On the one hand, you have God's faithful care to his people, and on the other, you have Israel's stubborn uh, disobedience. Uh, on the one hand, you have the Israelite nation who, at the end of our, our lesson from Deuteronomy today, was, was delivered from the Egyptian army, and, and God literally wiped out their enemies completely uh, in the Red Sea, yet after that, Israel is described as a stiff-necked people, uh, a, a people who are stubborn in their relationship with God. So as we hear the history of the Israelites, as we look through some of the Old Testament stories of the Israelites, it can lead us to look at those people and say, you have no right to be called God's holy people. But this history, this uh, act of disobedience after act of disobedience against God is one that likely is not all that different from my history and, and yours. Moses begins his, 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 uh, his, our lesson for today by saying, what does the Lord your God ask of you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to observe the Lord's commands and decrees that I am giving you today for your own good. Those words take us back to the, the basics of the first commandment. Those words take us back to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. But oftentimes as we look back at our history, as we look back at Israel's history, these words can cause us to, to squirm like a, a worm that is about to be put on a fishing hook because it leads us to be faced with the question, do we give God what he wants? Do we, do we love or do we fear God? That is, do we honor and respect God above all things? Or does God often not even get our, our second thought in a day? Do we walk in obedience to, to God's word? Or are we often like pioneers who are trying to blaze their own path instead of letting God's word be the light for our path? The almighty God, the, the creator of heaven and earth, the creator of all good things, the creator of everything, has given us his, his laws in, in his own very word. Yet do we often see that word as a gift from God or do we see it as something that is just getting in the way and I'll pick and choose what I want that fits my agenda? When we look at our relationship with God, it all comes back to the basics. It all comes back to that very first commandment. Do we love the Lord with all our heart. And the reality is, when we look at, at our own past, it isn't that much different than the past of the Israelites. Time and time again, we have failed, and what we deserve is anything but God's love. Instead, we, we deserve to be left wandering aimlessly, still searching for the promised land. Moses takes us back to the basics. He takes the Israelites back to the basics of God's law that shows how we have failed. And on our own, there's nothing that we are able to do for, for salvation. Yet keeping that in mind, listen to these next verses that, that Moses writes, verses 14 and 15. To the Lord your God belong the heavens, even the highest heavens, the earth and everything in it. 
Yet the Lord set his affection on your ancestors, and he loved them, and he chose you, their descendants, above all the nations, as it is today. God didn't need Israel. This is uh, the almighty God who created all things at the sound of his voice. Uh, this is the one God who, if other nations claimed there were other gods, even if the Israelites wanted to, to set up this, this golden calf and claim it to be God, this is the supreme God, the God of gods, the Lord of lords. This is the God who rules over all of creation, yet he chose you to be his people. If we were on a, a playground picking out uh, kickball teams, Israel would have been the one standing there at the end uh, waiting for, for God to, to, to pick them. They were uh, uh, not a, a large nation. They were uh, obviously not the most obedient uh, of nations as we see in their history. And what does that show us? that shows us that God didn't choose Israel. He didn't choose the, the Israelites because of anything that they had done. Instead, the reason that God chose Israel to be his people can only be described by one word. That's grace. God's undeserved love for his people. Because God loved those people, because God loves you and me, he chose us to be the objects of that love. Even as Israel failed time and time again, even as you and I fail, God chooses to love us and to never leave us, no matter what the circumstances may be. And as he did so with the nation of Israel, as he continued to walk alongside of Israel, he also did so with, with you and with me in mind. Because as he, he went along with the people of Israel, as he chose them to be his people, he led to the point where out of that nation came the Savior for your sins and for mine. God's grace for you and for me. It isn't just getting something that we don't deserve, but it's also getting the very opposite of what we do deserve. In spite of the fact that I, like Israel, have failed to love God perfectly, as the first commandment puts it, in spite of the fact that I have constantly disobeyed God, in spite of the fact that in my nature, I am in every way unlovable. God loved me. God loves you. Not only to, to point us to, to the, the, the fact that we won't be punished eternally for our sins, uh, but, but above and beyond that, God chose to love you so much that he sent his own son into this world. And he sent his own son into this world who says, uh, when, when that law crushes you, when you're beaten down by the fact that, that you have failed uh, to, to walk in obedience to your God, when you're beaten down with guilt uh, because you ha have, have sinned against your God, Jesus picks, up, picks you up and he says, look at the path that I walked to the cross. I did it perfectly for you in your place. When the law crushes you and when the law crushes me, reminding us that I deserve God to walk away from me for an eternity, the gospel restores, pointing me back to that Savior who radiates the love of your God. And if you ever doubt, if we ever doubt if God could, could really love someone like me, if God could really love someone like the Israelites, we point our eyes to that cross. We point our eyes to that cross where we see a Savior who not only came into this world, but he came into this world willingly to die for you and, to, and for me. The punishment that I deserved, he endured. So that now, your God doesn't see uh, that past 
so that now your God doesn't see that, that history, but your God looks at you and he says you're innocent. And our eyes then, then move from that cross to the tomb that, that, that now is empty, that our Savior walked out of, proving that not only does he have power over this life, but he also has power in death. That in our death, we too shall live with him. God has, has made uh, our, our sins totally powerless to condemn us. Now, you, like the Israelites, come before your God as his forgiven children. This, this is the grace that is yours. This is the grace that you have through that son. It's been given to you and to me. And this is the grace that now compels us to do what, what Moses says. This gospel message now, now lead, leads us to be able to listen to, to the words that, that Moses says. It leads us to be compelled to do what, what he says. Moses doesn't want the Israelites to, to obey God's commands in order to earn anything from God. He doesn't want them to obey the commands to earn their inheritance from God. Instead, Moses wants the Israelites to, to love and to obey their Lord out of response for everything that God had done for them. We aren't chosen as God's holy people because we're better than others or because we've done, it, done things differently than others. We're simply chosen to be, be God's because he loves us and because he chose to make us the objects of his love. We deserve to be that, that person on, on the kickball field waiting at the end and not ever be, be chosen. Yet God chose you first, before uh, everyone else. With Reformation coming up, I figured I had to throw a, a Luther quote in here. So Luther once, Luther once said, the law can show us where to go, but it can't give your legs the strength to get there. Only God's gospel can do that. So may the, the gospel of your God, uh, the God of the Israelites who led them, and that very same God is yours, who continues to lead you uh, through this life. May that God be the one that continues to strengthen you in your life. And may the words of that God constantly point you back to the waters of your baptism that prove that you are innocent before him. He could have chose anyone. He could have chose anyone to be his own. God didn't need the Israelites. God doesn't need me. But he chose to love me. And he chose to love you. So constantly turn back to God's word and never forget the basics. My past, my history, it in no way shows that I am deserving of God's love. But God doesn't look at that. God doesn't look at my past. He doesn't look at my, my history. He looks past that and he looks to his very own son. And as he does so, he says, you are worthy to be chosen. And you are. Amen. I invite the congregation to please stand.